All right, I'm back at this unit where I uh, re just replaced the defective uh, board because it had a defective circuit board on this brand new ICP ICM 450. And I made a video of this uh, about a week ago because it took them about a week to get a new one because they didn't have one in stock. So this is going back into the warranty and what this was doing was uh, intermittent turn uh, faults and if you've seen in my last video all you had to do is touch the case right here and you pushed on the case or you push just on the case in the corner or the vibration from the fan or the compressor would make uh, the whole unit and all the lights turn off and on and make your unit turn off. So that is working good now. All I did was swap it out and uh, of course you could see this is a good mid-turn that the internals do not look like any Goodman you've ever seen before. So we have uh, the three phase line monitor. Uh, if any one line drops out, it'll cut out your unit so you don't uh, single phase your uh, compressor motor, motor. If there's a deviance of compressor phase, you can actually set it up in the settings uh, so it cuts out your motor. Uh, if the voltage goes too high, you set it up to where it cuts out the voltage. If the voltage goes too low, you could cut it out to where it cuts out the voltage. Uh, so it has many safeties built into it and you can uh, put into it how many times does it auto reset before you manually have to come up here and press the fault and clear the codes um, to turn it off. So I set this unit up for three failures. If it fails three times, uh, you have to come up here and manually read the code. Uh, what else? You can see I have uh, the ICM. I forgive the wind, but the wind is coming in really strong from the ocean over there. We're like 15 to 17 mile gusts. Uh, so this is the head pressure controller. And that controls the speed of the fan. So it'll allow you, say you wanted 240 or 200. 60, whatever you control it at um, to keep a particular pressure on the high side so if the outdoor temperature dropped to 40 degrees or 50 degrees and you still had to use it it would just shut off the fan or slow it down to maintain the coil temperature and pressure so you have a properly operating and feeding expansion valve uh, so that's that unit there and then of course I got rid of their uh, 25 cent little piece of shit turd uh, capacitor and I put some overkill on there uh, because in this facility you do not want the condenser fan motor to go out because of the capacitor just because how much money is involved downstairs this has to run all the time flawlessly which it's a good min so that's kind of hard to do um, it's time for me to take out the suction line filter because this was from a burnout so I'm going to do that probably tomorrow and I'll take out the clean out filter from up here and it'll get its filter put back in the original location. I had it from years ago down at the expansion valve. Uh, what else? That's about it. And uh, then later on when I receive the uh, Sensi Predict. I'm, my goal is to put the Sensi Predict on this unit and I don't know if I'll put the ZOA uh, air quality control and sensor system on this unit or not but uh, I'm definitely gonna I think put the Sensi Predict on here and that's it I'll probably see me the next time well either when I recover this refrigerant and I take out the dryers from cleanup and let's see what it looks like right here nice and crystal clear because uh, when we first initially we filled this up by line set length and everything like that and there was a little flashing in the sight glass because look at we have an extra filter here look at this big ass big old filter right here imagine how much how many feet of 3 8 line set liquid does it take to fill this filter so even if you correctly filled it by for every foot of line you need to say, let's make an imaginary number, uh, 0.6 ounces of refrigerant for every foot of 3 8 line, and you did everything correctly, it should be a solid column of liquid with no flashing at the sight glass here. But you put this huge ass filter on here, and what is the cubic inch volume of this filter, and how many feet 
of line set, of 3 8 line set, is equal to compensate for that. And uh, so my son came out here and he did superheat and subcooling and he found out he had to add, I think it was nine more ounces of refrigerant to compensate to bring the superheat subcooling up to what the manufacturer specified. And then when he did that, the sight glass cleared up. And so that was just a visual aid there. I just wanted to do that to make a video on that to show you guys. I actually, I didn't have time out here to set the refrigerant charge on here. And I wanted to do a video, but uh, I was too busy. So I sent my son out to do it and I never got to make that video of showing you when the subcooling is low and you can actually see how low the liquid refrigerant falls on the coil to where it flashes and it's coming out and you can see the bubbles going through a side glass right here because remember liquid stacks up from down in the expansion valve and stacks up backwards all the way down the line and if you're supposed to have say 12 degrees of uh, superheat subcooling that means your condenser along these rows would be back stacked and filled up with solid liquid refrigerant with no bubbles in it to let's make a make-believe line of say this height and because of this size filter that was on here it needed it drained the condenser coil and it needed to be compensated for for the size of this filter so i'll see you guys in maybe a day or two and i'll remake this video i don't know where i'll post it when i um take off these clean out filters and there it goes it's satisfied the roof all right see you guys